Hey guys, what is going on everybody? My name is Fabian and welcome to this tutorial. Um, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how I made this atmosphere around this planet using Cinema 4D and Octane Render. Before I start the tutorial I just want to give a shout out to Mitch Myers who originally created this method or um, made a tutorial about it. I obviously leave a link in the description to that video down below. I just thought that the video is a little too long with about 58 minutes. Um, so I decided to make my own a little shorter, but obviously I gotta give him credit because otherwise I wouldn't even know how to do this. So thank you for that, Mitch Myers. So we're in Cinema 4D, we have Octane Render open. I'm using version 4 uh, XB 2.0, which is a test version of the new Octane Render uh, 4.0 coming out sometime, I don't even know when, but I'm sure it works with older versions as well. Um, so first we need a planet, of course, which is gonna be just a normal sphere. I'm gonna put a texture on it, uh, which is a texture from NASA, I think. Uh, I don't really remember where I got it from. I think it's uh, from NASA, but um, you can just uh, search it on Google um, called 16K Mars, te Mars Texture, something like this, uh, which I have in my textures, HDRIs. I don't even know why it's in HDRIs, just laziness. Oh, it's actually 8K, sorry, my bad. It's 8K, but that's um, way enough. So next we're gonna make a bump map using an image texture uh, because we need to control the power of the bump map because otherwise it's way too heavy. I'm using, I'm also using the color map as a bump map here because, um, you know, it's usually not recommended to use a color map as bump map, but as the planet is gonna be far away, um, it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna use a gloss material with a pretty high roughness like this, yeah. So let's just put this texture on it and it should fit right away as you can see. And it already looks quite good. Um, next I'm just gonna make a really quick a, um, a HDR environment with some star, with a star map. Um, it's not necessary but I'm sure it shows better uh, what it's gonna look like in the end. And now we need a targeted area light targeting our sphere or our planet like that. Just like, let's put it on the same side as in the render, just for completion's sake. So now we have our planet here. It's still a, a little bright, I know, but um, it's all right like this, I think. Okay, so we have our planet here. So now for the atmosphere. We're gonna create a fog volume, and this fog volume has to be slightly larger than our sphere, okay? So as you can see, um, the length on the x-axis is already right so now we have to just adjust the height and the depth of it so the planet completely is covered in the fog volume like this yeah a little more like that maybe yeah so now we have it uh, next up we're gonna make a copy of our sphere uh, you can you don't have to delete the texture but obviously you can it doesn't really matter and put it inside our fog volume and as you can see the fog volume disappeared um, now make sure to uncheck the visibility on that planet, but not the full visibility, just uh, these two checks. As you can see now, down here you can see a slight fog volume that has the shape of our sphere. So if I now uncheck our main sphere, you can see we have the same uh, shape as fog volume now. So now what you have to do is uh, make the fog volume slightly bigger, um, and you do that by just changing the size of the sphere. And maybe you can see now um, that we get this very nice looking border around our planet. It's still a little thick so we just adjust the the size again a little bit. Uh, which is supposed to be like this maybe? Um, and another thing that I saw when I first created this render right here is that somehow the fog volume is slightly off-centered. Um, so you're gonna fix that by just simply trying around. So I'm gonna do that really quick and um, I'll skip to that. So I've just adjusted it by like one and a half centimeters on each axis, which should do the job as you can see. Um, next up, you will have to decrease the volume step, step length, as you can see, because it's not very dense now. So if you decrease that, it's get, it gets a lot denser and de more detailed. And also maybe increase a little bit of the density. And now you can see that we get these huge steps here, which is something you absolutely don't want to have. And you fix that by just 
decreasing the voxel size in the editor. Um, but be very careful with this because it might crash your octane. So I decreased this to about 2.1 and as you can see we got rid of most of the steps. And now we have this really nice looking shiny ring around our planet. Um, next up we're gonna use the colors inside our volume options to create a sort of orange looking atmosphere. Um, you can obviously do the colors you want um, but you can do this in the scattering option. Just keep the RBG spectrum in here and search for a orange looking tone. Don't make it too saturated though because our fog volume is quite dense. So if you put this up too saturated, as you can see, you get a really dark atmosphere. So you don't wanna have that. So we're gonna put something like this maybe. Um, and also here you can either put in white or a also a very light orange as you prefer. So now as you can see, we have an orange looking atmosphere right here. So now made the fog volume a little denser as well. So we were, I don't know if, I think we were at 400 or something, now we're at 700. So you actually can see these um, volume also on the planet itself. Um, another thing you can also do is use the path tracing, which makes it look a little better in my opinion, um, but it's it takes a lot longer to render um, and it's not that good for animation in my opinion. That's also just preference. So at the end of the day, I just decide myself to I uh, use direct lighting for most of my animations because I just don't have the time to render uh, 10 minutes or even an hour per frame. So um, I mostly do my best with direct lighting regarding animation, but it's just personal preference. Uh, obviously you will get a slightly more realistic result with path tracing. Um, so now we have this atmosphere. It's a little too big, but um, you can just play around with it and that's the general thing. Um, what I also did here was um, I added some uh, bloom so it gets a little brighter. Wait, let me just get a little closer to this planet right here with my focal length so we get about the same result as in the image, like this. And now uh, we're gonna... Wait, let me just decrease the sample rate really quick to like 200 because we don't need that much. Uh, and use our camager, camera imager to just find a good looking uh, response. Which I think, I don't even know which one I used in my image, but I'm sure we'll find it. I think I used this one, to be honest. Um, so I made this light, slightly brighter, this as well, and then added a bloom to it, making it like that. So yeah, that's about what I did here. Um, I think that's what I used. And then just used some Photoshop filters and color correction to create this more orange looking tone in it. Uh, but yeah, that was the tutorial on how to create this nice looking atmosphere. So again, shout out to Mitch Meyer for the original tutorial. I will obviously leave a link in the description down below to the original um, tutorial. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, for more tutorials. If you want to know anything else about my everyday project or something like that, just feel free to ask. I will answer if possible or as, as good as possible. Um, with that being said, thank you for watching and peace out.